Yo, it's me, Doncha. Welcome back to the Hideout, you guys. I am so glad you guys can make it. And we are back with our second Candy Flurry video. I'm excited to talk about it, you guys. We are on the ball. We are on the roll. This is the second chapter of Candy Flurry, and I hope you guys are ready to talk about it. It was a really interesting little chapter. Some, like, key little things was brought up um, that I thought was really cool. You know, just talking about the other sweet users and just talking about um, the situation between the new MC and our little main, I guess, sidekick guy he's going to be. I'm going to talk more about him and what I think his role in the story is going to be, you know, deeper inside this video. But before that, like I always like to say, if you like this content, if you want more Candy Flurry, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that comment section below so we can talk about some things going on and you let me know what you like about this new chapter and you like about this new manga that's out, okay, you guys? And you hit the subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any Candy Flurry chapters we have coming. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to keep talking about it. I think it's going to be a really fun thing. But before we get into that, intro. Okay, so Candy Flurry. This, this is getting a little interesting. The thing about Candy Flurry I think is really cool is that um, I'm waiting for the candy, well not candy, but the sweet users to get really interesting. I'm ready for their powers to start getting out there. And we met a new sweet user in this new chapter. He was pretty interesting, the macaroon guy. Um, his powers are pretty, pretty cool. He was taking the macaroons, opening up, wrapping on people's heads like they was eating people kind of deal, things like that. And I found that really interesting, found that really cool. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I want to talk about the beginning of the chapter and we lead off right where we started at the end of the first chapter. Where it seemed like we was going to get this major confrontation from our main girl and this new main guy, sidekick guy that we have going here. Where it's because he's part of the receipt day, which I just found out means recipe by one of my good friends um, in French, that he is going to be trying to capture her because she is the lollipop user. Well, in this chapter, we see that he's not in the condition to try to capture her at all, and she takes him down pretty easily. And also, I think that our MC is pretty powerful and sweet user, based on what I've seen from this chapter and what I've seen from chapter one as well. So now I'm really interested in how powerful the other lollipop user is, who was actually the one who destroyed Tokyo. I'm really interested in that because if our MC is already kind of like one-shotting people, then if this lollipop user is really tapped into their powers, no wonder to destroy Japan, or not Japan, Tokyo. And if they did Tokyo like that, and isn't even fully tapped in, what more are they gonna do? But I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself. And basically, she's sitting on top of the new guy here, and she's all like, you can't catch, capture me in your condition. Like, it's not happening. You're not doing it. And I find it really cool. Like, it's just cute. Um, I feel like this manga's gonna have a lot of cute, funny moments. And I just, I can't, I, uh, I can't wait to get more of them. But she's sitting on top of him and like, you can't catch me in this condition. And he's all like, no, like, I have to capture you. Like, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the third. And she's all like, oh, you can't capture a girl as cute as me. And he's all like, what do you being cute have to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, or with anything that you've done, you know what I'm saying? You like pop music. She's like, dang, why are you so serious? Like, take a joke, G. Like, it, it is, I don't know. I just really love this, like, type of comedy that's going to be coming out of Candy Flare. It kind of reminds me of Mashville to a degree, which is why I think it's going to be really successful because if it has that, like, decent type of or good comedy like Mashal, but actually is more serious and not supposed to be focused on comedy, then I'm really excited to see where it goes. But anyway, so basically she's all like, okay, well, if you're not convinced and you're not going to listen to me. I'm trying to tell you that I'm not the one who did the whole destroyed um, Tokyo thing. I'm not even sure I could even do that. Like, she's like, I'm not even tapped in like that. But if you're not going to believe me, I'm just going to run away. <laughs> it was another comedy moment, like I said. And she's just like, she's like running away, like, okay, I'm out of here. And she dips and he can't even follow her. And she tries to escape. But the moment he tries to dip, he gets this, like a little ring, I guess, on his receipt phone or receipt phone. I must have received a receipt there or a receipt there. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but he gets a little ring on his phone. And they're all like, oh, there's a dangerous sweet user that's coming in. And right before that, we do see the macaroon dude take someone out. We see his visuals and then we see him continue on. I did skip over that piece, but we do end up seeing that. So when he gets that call on his phone, and he's all like, oh, there's a dangerous dude coming in at the location. And then um, he's all like, I'm already headed after somebody else. And they're like, we don't really care who you're after. You need to go to them now. They're highest priority. And before he can say, I'm after the supposed lollipop user, they hang up on him. So he's all like, uh, okay, I guess I need to go there and help. Cool. So he goes there trying to help out, but he's weakened as we know. So what is he really going to do against this dude who seemed just to wiped out a few other people, receipt people like him? And I don't think our dude is high up in receipt day, if I remember correctly. I mean, I don't think that was told to us. And he doesn't really seem like he's anybody super, super special, especially if a little injury like that did him so bad against that um, donut dude. And our MC came and just one shot at the donut dude. I don't know. I just don't, don't think he's anybody that important. And I think that's pretty clear. 
So then the scene changes and we saw what the Macaroon dude is doing. And the Macaroon dude is basically going and whooping a whole bunch of the Recete dude's asses that's coming after him. Now, we don't know exactly where he's going and what he's trying to do and why the Recete people are coming after him. But they're basically attacking him, all right? And why he's headed in some direction that he's going and they're getting their asses beat. So the sidekick dude, he jumps in. He's like, okay, I got to save like my people being the ass beat. He has to jump from behind dude to dude's knocking guys out. And it just doesn't go well at all. Like, he just kind of gets absolutely fucking thrashed, it seems like, based on the where the thing cuts off, but then he like looks at him, he jumps at him, the macro dude notices him, he looks behind him, scene change. Then we go back to our MC who's running away from doing she's hiding. And she's all like, wait a minute, I already hit from him? Like, okay, that was easier than I expected. And she jumps down, she's all like, okay, well, all I gotta do is now is get home, get my things and get out of the neighborhood. I'm a cute girl, you know what I'm saying? I'll be fine anywhere. And she's like telling herself this, trying to come off confident and like really and like sure that she's gonna be able to move on and do her thing, but then she stops for that second and goes, I really wish I didn't have to run away. Like, she, like, felt it again. And then she's like, okay, well, I got, whatever. Like, she said, they'll probably find me again, duh, 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 but whatever. I got, basically got to keep going. So it's like she's trying to act calm and act like she's, like, really in tune and ready to move on. But then she's also still very, like, dang, like, I'm just, like, I didn't do this. Like, they want those on my lollipops. You know what I'm saying? So she's really holding this weight of no matter what, they're going to think I'm the lollipop user. So I have to now act like I'm the one who did it, even though I'm not. But... That's starting to change. And now I'm starting to see where the story is going to go and changing that for her. And she's getting gaining a lot of confidence and, you know, saying self-worth and wanting to discover what's really going on with all of this, I think, throughout the story. That's the direction I think it's going to go. But we'll have to see, right? So she's having this little moment. She's talking about she's going to dip. And then she hears this noise, doom, and this crash. She turns behind him and she sees Sidekick Boy getting his butt beat by Mac Rune Dude. So she's all like, oh. Okay, well, Mac Rune dude's distracting him. I'm about to get up out of here. I'm not too worried about it. This is my chance to, like, get up and go. I'm out. I'm dipping. And then before she can really get up right away, she's talking about she's going to. Then she look, and she see this boy crying. Just sitting there just a crying, 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 because he's seeing everybody get beat the hell up. And then the little boy basically, then the little boy's in there crying, crying, crying. Then the Mac Rune dude look at the little boy, and he's all like, what are you crying for? He's all like, he's all sad and whatever. And he's like, oh, you like sweets, don't you hear? And he's like, basically hand him like the macaroon thing. And the kid's like, no, I hate sweets. Basically breaking it down to he hates sweets because of what happened in Tokyo. So now a lot of people do dislike sweets now because of what happened in Tokyo, right? So then that triggers her. It's very interesting to me because she was already feeling away about having to run away. She was seeing the boy crying and she's all like oh my god he's crying like, I, I want to I, sh I should help him but should I help him I need to also get away but then that final moment of seeing him say he hates sweets it hit her like what like come on for real and then the magnum go dude gets mad and goes you hate sweets probably feeling the same type of way that RMC feels except he's in a whole other negative side of it and then tries to attack the kid and RMC's all like no, no I can't do that that to me is really cool she throws the helmet on real quick somehow, whew, jumps in front of it, hits, hits the macro with the lollipop and protects him. Completely surprising the boy. And the fact that he's probably someone who really understands Tokyo great and really understands like a lollipop user, you know, destroyed everything. He's going to see this girl with this big old lollipop. Well, he knows it's a girl because of the outfit and stuff like that. We don't see her face, but he's going to know it's a girl. He's this girl with this big old lollipop protecting him against another sweet user. What a story to tell. I'm really interested in what is going to happen from here. And she basically one shot the dude. I think with one or two shots him. Like she just comes out, boom. Like just takes him out like it was nothing. And the receipt that receipt that dude couldn't even really help with nothing like that. Couldn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he couldn't really do much. And then until until he felt like he was gonna come out of nowhere, and then Danny came up and said, Let me get my little hit in, but like on some sidekick stuff. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't really like helping because she was on like some ropes. Like she hit him real good, and he was all like, What in the world? She just like hit me mad hard, and then he came up like, I'll oh, shut up, and like took him out. Like they'll be trying to get up all mad to come in for another blow. Like, so he ain't really impressed me nowhere in his little shiny moment is supposed to be in that little chapter. So I'm waiting no more to receipt, but I'm receipt that dude where to do something. But I'm loving my MC right now and I'm loving how she portrays herself and I'm loving how she comes off. She's just really, really cool. And then at the end they have that reconciling moment where he's noticing like, you know what I'm saying, I thought you were running away. And she's like, nah, I'm not gonna. She's like, because I don't want people to hate sweets because of the lollipop user. And I also don't want people knowing thinking I'm the one who had to who did it. I'm not the one who did it. You know? And he's all like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Like, he's like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to follow it. I'm going to go, okay, you weren't the one who did it. 
And that's her first step. But it seems that it's not going to be that simple because when the other said that dudes pulled up on her, she put the helmet back on and she did. You know, she didn't stick around, but she was somewhat happy because that's the first step. One of them people believe her. But right now, that's realistic. She can't just be like, oh, yeah, I don't, I'm glad. I'm glad the Mangaka didn't just be like, oh, yeah, he believes her. So, you know, she's not even going to try to run away from him. She's going to stick around him. Like, I hope she's still trying to run away and, like, hire powers and not have her powers out there so she can try to live normally. But then maybe somehow she's going to try to do some sidekick role thing and protect people without the Resete. But we'll see. Well, you guys, that's all I have for Candy Flurry. There's not much to it. Um, There's a lot of things I'm looking forward to, but I'm not going to dive too much into, you know, saying that stuff. That's all that fantasy and, like, stuff just off the head candy comes off of my head. But as we get more of this manga and we go farther in, these videos are going to get deeper. We're going to talk about a lot more stuff, and I'm hoping that this lore and this world and this power system just really, we just really have some fun with it. We got some sweet, pun intended things coming on. You know what I'm saying? But it's Doncho, and like I always say, if you want to help us out here at the Doncho's Hideout, you can always support the Patreon and the coffee down below monetarily. Okay, you guys? And if you want to, you can always subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Come back. Let's talk about Candy Flurry some more. Hit the comment section. Hit the like. You know what I'm saying? We in it. Um, I don't know. Candy Flurry is like, I don't know. I ate a lot of sugar too before that. You know what I'm saying? I got donuts right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm feeling it. I feel like Candy Flurry is going to be my hype one. Like I'm going to be like just doing with like a lot of goofy stuff with you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying it and you come back to the hideout. Peace. Young noise.